Welcome back to the virtual tour of Seamus Heaney Listen Now Again. We will now be exploring Marvels, the final section of the exhibition. The element this section is linked to is the air, and it shows the uplifting power of the marvellous in Seamus Heaney's poetry. Throughout the exhibition, we've been on a journey through Seamus Heaney's life and work, and here we see the mature, assured poet. Heaney said that when he was 50, he began to credit marvels in his poetry, that is, to find the extraordinary in the ordinary. There is a sense of fresh inspiration in his poetry at this time. We see a range of poems about simple things that become infused with a sense of magic. A key poem in this section is The Rain Stick, which was published in the collection The Spirit Level in 1996. In the last section, you heard about Seamus Heaney's Nobel Prize win. After this huge honour, there was great anticipation for what he would publish next. This poem was inspired by a gift given to Seamus Heaney of a rain stick from his friend Rand. Heaney said that when you listen to the rain stick, you are like a rich man entering heaven through the ear of a raindrop. It's also a very special poem for us here at the exhibition, as the title, Listen Now Again, comes from the last words of this poem. It is a poem that's all about stopping and slowing down, noticing the world around you. If you visit the exhibition, you can turn the rain stick and listen to the sound that inspired Heaney to write this poem. Our next case contains a number of illustrated books. Our curator Geraldine Higgins has spoken of Heaney's real investment in books as objects and books as really beautiful works of art. I'm going to focus on two books here illustrated by Jan Hendricks, a Dutch artist and friend of Seamus Heaney's. Hendricks read Heaney's first collection, Death of a Naturalist, and was so taken by it that he sent Heaney illustrations to accompany the poem Lovers on Arran. This led to a correspondence developing between the two. Their first book together was The Golden Bow, which was published in 1992, before they had met in person. Another of their collaborations shown in this case is Heaney's translation of Book 6 of the Aeneid. This was published posthumously. Hendrick said that Heaney was tinkering with the translation right up to the end. There was a sense that he never wanted to let it go. Hendrix's illustrations do not show the underworld of the story, but instead depict Oaxaca, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Mexico. Hendrix lived in Mexico and Seamus and Mari Heaney had visited him there. Thus, this book commemorates their friendship as well as their joint literary ventures. The handwritten piece that you see in this case is The Blackbird of Blanmore. It is a very sad and reflective poem as Heaney thinks back on the loss of his younger brother in a childhood accident. It could be seen as a follow-on to his much earlier poem, Midterm Break. In his later work, Heaney became more reflective, thinking back over his life and returning to his childhood in his work. He was also writing numerous elegies for friends and family members. However, this was also an optimistic time which saw Heaney looking to the future. He referred to this period as the age of births, with the birth of his three granddaughters, Avine, Anna Rose and Shifra. He wrote each of them a poem. His last poem was In Time for his youngest granddaughter Shifra, written just two weeks before his death. Our next item is a postcard edition of Clearances 3, a poem better known as When All the Others Were Away at Mass. In the excavations video, Catherine showed you an early draft of this poem. It was one that Heaney worked on over the years, and it finally took its place in a sequence of sonnets remembering his mother. In 2015, this poem was voted Ireland's favourite poem of the 20th century. Heaney's son Michael said, Dad was never happier than when reading or writing poetry, so for his work to be part of a project that shows the sweep of Irish poetry and underlines its crucial part in our culture is a wonderful tribute to his life and work. If you come and visit the exhibition in person, you will be able to hear some of Heaney's poems read aloud by such people as the poet's wife, Mary Heaney, and the actor Liam Neeson. It is a lovely chance to hear the poems, sit back 
and reflect on the exhibition. Finally, the exhibition ends with an artwork based on Seamus Heaney's last words. Heaney died in August 2013 and his last words were Nolly to Mary, the Latin for don't be afraid. These were sent in a text message to his beloved wife, Mary. Street artist Mazer created a piece inspired by these words on Richmond Street. He has recreated a version of this at the exhibition as a blackboard on which our visitors write messages about Heaney, draw and write their own favourite quotes. We hope that people will carry this heartening message with them from the exhibition. Thank you so much for joining this virtual tour of Seamus Heaney Listen Now again. Check out our YouTube channel to learn more about the poems and for some fun activities to try out at home. We hope to welcome you to the exhibition in future so you too can experience the music of what happens.